Hey, everybody. It's Dork Court. Dun, 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 dun. I got Boston on today because it's opening day in baseball. And I don't know if you know this, but uh, Wild Old Uncle Blair just... Sports is just kind of a thing I keep track of because other people do. I'm down. I get that they enjoy it. I don't expect people to get in the fist fights about the Exeter insignia and the Constitution insignia. Like, you know, I don't know. Hypothetically, somebody I know might have John Price. But uh, yeah, no, so I get that you're like, you see some guy in a Dodgers hat and you want to flip him off. Uh, but <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, look at me with my living by the the beach little, you know, surfer thing on and my hat. And I say the Dodgers when I meant the Yankees, right? <laughs> I don't hate the Dodgers, except that they're the West Coast Yankees. And they fill the same ecological niche. And my old buddy Rick Austin is a big Dodgers fan, which is funny because he was a Yankees fan on the East Coast. Mark Espinoza. Hello. I'm like, who are you talking to? <laughs> Just the kids who are, uh, you know, we're on, baby. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I've been live for 140 seconds or something. I, I'm not sure how math works. Oh, um, no, that, that seems right. Oh, my God. Our kid. Our kid. <laughs> like, like Walker's our son. I'm so proud of our son. Our he, beautiful son. Uh, he is so funny. He's taking the uh, standardized tests you have to take when you're a junior in high school. And right. it's, you know, like the armed services test and all this fucking nonsense that the man has to figure out how to place you. Yeah. And he's purposefully boning the math stuff. So whatever the man, the algorithm, the end up being the matrix, the algorithm thinks he's not, they're not going to demand anything that has to do with math. He's going to be considered <laughs> just average. Everything else, he's like huh. B, B plus, A minus fucking superstar with English, but he wants to be on that side of the algorithm and not like, <laughs> it's weird. He's he's pre-planning yeah. a whole bunch of his life that he's not going to have to deal with because that's just somebody else's job. That's awesome. Unless I don't know. College, they make him take math classes to catch up to how he is everywhere else. So then he's taking like introductory math that he already knows how to do. I, but because you know, he's I, I don't know it. if he's really thought this all the way out. This is just based <laughs> on a couple of conversations we've had in the car on the way to math class. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Ukrain. Hello, oh. all. Steve, oh, we are live. Oh, yeah. Oh, jump right in. All right. There you go. All right. Let's <laughs> yeah. I'm, guess I'm ready. All right. I didn't catch wanna... it before you say something to get you canceled. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Fortunately, Mark and I, I was just talking and Mark kind of got it because he's like who's he talking to and so he was guarded enough to go hey what's up <laughs> hey oh, yeah uh, man yeah. i've been babbling about opening day of red sox for like oh yeah it's opening i think day. i said 140 right. seconds it is opening day yeah I oh people... see that's new that's something new behind you little lady with her tongue out oh you. yeah i traded so i um there's a card shop that i I don't know if I remember I told you a while ago, like I brought them all, like my all that magic stuff that I bought. Oh yeah. Oh that flea market. Binder, I yeah. brought them all and then they gave me money. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, um, well then I I did that with a bunch of uh Pokemon stuff that I had found. And <laughs> I traded for a bunch of I traded for some Mickey Mantle cards and they had this there and I was just like, Oh, I'll take that. I think that's kind of cool. It's, I don't know. It's a wrestler, but I kind of thought it was pretty oh. cool. Is it signed? It's signed. It's tough to see. It's like, yeah. Huh. Anyway, Mad Shivers is here. Wow. I'm really stoked. Jim Thielman. Good old Matt. You know, what's cool about the internet is that I was into movie props. I don't know if you guys know this. Back in the early part of the 21st century. Heard this rumor. <laughs> and uh, I met this guy named Kev Kamarley, who is, uh, I think he was an Air Force captain back then. Super into Ghostbusters, and we had the same kind of sense of humor. And uh, anyway, uh, we got to be pals online, and, and Kev and Matt were friends. And so Matt was going to San Diego and he said, Hey, just give a what's up to my crazy buddy who's got the 
stuff at the show there. And then Matt and I became friends. It's awesome. Hmm. It's a very small world. I mean, I think that's essentially how we met. So, right? Isn't this the... It, I mean, obviously, we know the whole uh, framing of the picture connection. But, yeah. um, I mean, w I met you from... I worked at the video store <laughs> up the block from Isotope. Yeah. And... Um, I just happened to kept on telling like Ian and uh, Jay what uh, what comics I wanted to read because I was buying all of the absolute oddity crap out of the previews magazine. <laughs> and they were like, this stuff is great. And I just and then we hit it off and then we got in, I got introduced to you at Isotope, which is kind of crazy yeah. to think about. But small world, man. Yeah, small the original world. Isotope. The original. Is oh, is that the original Isotope? Is that the first oh. one? On, on Noriega. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was the first one. Yeah. And I, I still the drive by there and at lunchtime and go, I should probably get some of that teriyaki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I worked at the the bank. I worked in the Hollywood video that was the bank that what's her name robbed. Yeah, Patty Hearst. Patty Hearst robbed. Oh dude, I love that. <laughs> Every single person that came into that store had to tell me that <laughs> and they're, they're probably stopping and looking around like where's the big red x that we get where that picture was taken from right right and the, it was like it was my introduction to san francisco you know what it, that place is now it's like medical offices oh is it it's I, like and oh we're, we're, yeah. like the most drab color that you can huh. for out here in the gray and uh it's like i i firmly believe that's to like fool the tourists like if you don't have the exact address that can't possibly be the bank that patty hearst got yeah you know <laughs> whatever what am, am i am i oh i'm not in the top corner so i'm not pointing at larry's head but did you notice my poster change yeah escape from new york <laughs> oh is it this side or is it that side i don't know oh, which side yeah, wait which are you pointing at at Snake or the guy who's about? Uh, well, yes, my I find yeah. I, I framed my Escape from New York. That is a fantastic movie poster, and I quite love it. Wait, what is the story about that? You you bought it? Oh, because you got money from. <laughs> I know there's levels. You got this money trip from to something Thailand? weird. <laughs> oh wait, you won video poker in Vegas, and you used that money to buy that poster. Uh, the king, king of the crap buyer. That's you know the full. That circle. is fantastic. I love it when people do stuff like that. What was I gonna do? Yeah. Spend it on gambling more stuff? So. I, I did that back in the day. Speaking of isotope, I bought, I sold some art, or I got a big check from somebody, and I'm like, this is great. I'm gonna take half and buy whiskey, and I bought a four hundred dollar bottle of scotch. See, that's how you do it. Which was idiotic because I didn't appreciate what I was swilling. Like there would still be parts of that now if I did. But anyway, I would be like, well, I can't. Anyway, uh, so but Mimi was like, what the fuck? And I, and I said, well, no, I, I only took half the money. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I was going to burn the other half on little stuff. But I said, half is for you. And it just so happened that that's what the first iPod costs. Oh, there you go. So I bought her the first iPod, got it engraved and everything. And then we have a kid who grows up to love Baby Driver, who has that iPod specific thing with a dad who loves props. And he finds that in a drawer. And he, he firmly believes that that's a movie prop from Baby Driver because there's that shot where there's 800 of them on the, on the table. And, you're and like, he's like, this is, this is just one of them. And it just happens to have my parents' name on the back and everything. But the, so he has that framed in his room next to his baby driver poster. That's awesome. <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> it's perfect. Not but but it's it's again, what was I gonna spend the money on? And I and obviously some of the money went to a bill, but it went to a bill, and then the other portion was like, ah, maybe I will buy that original escape poster on eBay that's a little out of the the norm price range. How long did you look at it before you pulled the trigger? I negotiated with the guy. So oh, yeah. okay. there was a of little bit did. of, yeah. there was a, there was a little <laughs> bit of back and forth. No, I mean, it's just, yeah, like, it was, it was about right though. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just, just like, you know, too much that Steve at 18 would have wanted to have paid. 
<laughs> like, like how is future Steve paying this much money for this thing? I can exactly just go to the store exactly. and get, right? if, if the kid that was in the basement in 18 North Pennsylvania Avenue that's, that's and wanted I mean. and wanted yeah. this on his wall, he would have he would have cried <laughs> that it was this much money. So, so I, these people I, watching don't go to that address. Or yeah, or, or whatever, go to it. So, or say hi, hang out with his parents. Or yeah, say hi. <laughs> if, 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 if you do happen to stop by, ask my dad if he'll if he'll let you uh, deliver my original Star Wars poster that he has hanging in my basement. That oh, or the that. Uh, belongs or, to him forever. Or the Spider Man World Trade Center poster. He's got both of those in in the basement. They will not. They will never leave Colonia. I have a, another question about the poster, but I have to say this thing about your dad. Your dad is a really cool guy. I really enjoy <laughs> hanging out with him and hearing stories about him. So just as a guy who's like an, an unindicted co-conspirator, I can tell you for a fact, <laughs> as a person who's only talked to him like maybe eight man hours put together, he's <laughs> never letting that Star Wars poster go. Oh, no. He, he, <laughs> he, he, yeah, no he, he told me, he goes, he, he says, that's... That you you roll up at my funeral. It's like you, yeah. roll, you can roll it up at my funeral, and I was oh, like, all right, yeah. well, um, no, now. I'm just, <laughs> now imagining your dad's funeral, like the poster over the coffin, and then like they like fold it. No, no, it'll be it it'll be in his hand. <laughs> it'll be in his oh. it'll be in his hand. And then, I totally I get it, Mark. The the soldiers are like <laughs> yeah. holding it like a flag. I the the craziest. I sorry to go off on that tangent, but the craziest part about that is like. My dad was like, yeah, I found it in one of your, like, piles of posters. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, piles. my right. piles of posters. That's right. They're my posters. And he's like, yeah, well, it framed nice. And, yeah, now it stays there. All right. But you know, <laughs> as a dad, like, with even the best of intentions, like, the end of the story is you win that one because you're dad. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> right. Yeah, 100 Like, <laughs> I'm like, of all the other things that could be hanging downstairs in the basement, I that, just, it's pretty cool that it, it's that it's a, the Spider-Man World Trade Center one that we got from Adventure Planet, so that's pretty <laughs> cool. And then my uh, signed uh, X verse Severs poster by like twenty people in the cast or some weird, <laughs> and I'm like, why is that still hanging up down there? So anyway. Steve, I just Google mapped Adventure Planet, speaking of, to see what it looks like now. Oh, what, what does it look like? It's very depressing. Do you want to, can, we, can you show? Can you show? Yes. It's funny. This is like niche interest for just me and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I did start reading the uh, the side when you guys started going deep New Jersey. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There that's it looks like oh, now. there you go. That's the old. That's the that's the old movie theater that we used to get. That's awesome. We used to get yeah. all the free movie posters from, and go see movies for free. That's where we saw Phantom Menace. Like, yeah. the, that's where. Yep. What What's kind of funny about this? You can go back in time. So it's like, what is this? All right. What movies they got there now? <laughs> oh, huh. you're going back in time. Oh wow! Look, it was all Indian films at one point. Yeah! 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 <laughs> Well, that's, that what it, that's what the whole that's what the whole uh, that's, complex became. That's awesome. That Google Maps will blur out people's fucking license plates, yeah. but all of that <laughs> IP there is just fine. Yeah, but yeah, that the comic book store was right here, wherever this thing is. Oh, look Garage. at that! Yeah, look at that, man! Wild, wow. huh? Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, because those are the exits to the movie theaters, and then as you went down, the first we shop like right was here. a hair, was a haircut salon yeah and then next door was the comic book shop and then right mm -hmm. next door to the comic book shop was a women's clothing store it was just like on a weird little anyway yeah i remember the guy who owned the hair salon used to fight with the owner of our comic book store all the time but then remember he had a kid and his kid was like the thickest blackest hair you've ever seen on a baby and it was like shoulder length i was like of course this is your kid <laughs> it sounds like some kind of uh, forest animal. <laughs> anyway, Beautiful. let's let's give the guys some shout outs. I'm dying to know what Matt meant about saw my pimp today. Oh, and... I, I think I think it, I think it was in relation to talking about money stuff, but yeah. maybe. <laughs> well, and then speaking of Kamarly, those guys are on the 3D print tip. Oh, and thanks to this is Hector. Who last time uh, Walker was on, 
uh, gave him a little uh, advice about the pla dehydrator thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got that. It's working fine. So nice. It's just not going right now, but that's all hooked up and going. So thanks. That's super cool to me. I was telling you guys today in the in the gr digital green room. I really appreciate <laughs> that. Like, you know, Walker was treated as part of the crew starting when he was about twelve. I thought that was really <laughs> cool of you. But it also reminds me that like guys on the internet think that too. So I'm. Sh mm. It was really cool for me to see Hector going. All right, kid, football player guy. I've been following <laughs> since you were a big fat donut. Here's what you need to do with this 3D print thing that you're all sassy about. And I, I just, I really appreciated that. It was cool. Mm. That's as close <laughs> as I get to showing an emotion. Uh, and that, except, you know, Qui-Gon can do that. So wait, you have the oh. printer back up and running. Is there, has anything been made yet or? Yeah, we ran through that small little boat thing. The test. Oh, the tester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tester thing, just to make sure that it didn't, that we had the new, the problem was some kind of clogging thing with the nozzles. And then we, our replacement nozzles were incorrect and caused a worse problem. And so we had to clean all that out, strip it down, get all that shit out, get the correct nozzles. And then we just ran that and every, with dried plot and everything seems to be okay. Yeah, Chris nice. is right. Benchy, that's his name. <laughs> I always think it's Bodie, and I know that's stupid, so I never say it. But I can, it make it prevents me from re remembering that it's Benchy. Oh, is it like the tester image thing, three D model that just? It's it's just a small thing that does undercuts and it tests all kinds of different. It's not just laying it, it down flat. Yeah, it does spirit. all like I think it tests all the fills and all that stuff, so that it, and then when you're done, it like. Anyway, it's just a you can look at it and go, ah, okay, I had to do another one of those. Fuck you. <laughs> After like the 30th one. <laughs> we so, have like three on our mantelpiece. <laughs> we did the first one. We were so proud. And then there's like a little pig we did, which is kind of like the next step that everyone does. And then we did like a couple more benchies. I don't know. That but Shivers is a hundred percent right. That's what it is. An adorable torture test. <laughs> Fuck you, Benchy. I love you. So, See you tomorrow. <laughs> so so I wanted to know we didn't do this last week because we saw Ghostbusters. But my question is, Mark, have you seen the new Ghostbusters yet? Wait. Not yet. I almost wait. saw it on Saturday. Wait, before you do that, can I get that by questioning about the New York poster or I'll never, I'll never. Yes. Listen. Just, just real quick. Just tell me a number and we can move on. Uh, after you got it, how long did it take to get framed? Oh, well, I, I like, I was going to go to a framing shop and get it actually done. And then uh, cheap Pete's or whatever it's CP framing and whatever it's called now. <laughs> they quoted me and I was like, yeah, no, that's okay. So then I ordered, um, there's a service called they they snap snap zo or snap co oh, yeah. posters they are the best movie posters ever Ooh, and all huh. of my movie posters are in them huh. so it uh, about a week and a half i got it hey uh thank you for that answer uh, let mark uh um answer that ghostbusters thing because shivers just said this to me which <laughs> makes me mildly offended because it's like <laughs> over there, like I can't, right. I can't actually just go. All right, go. Oh, ha ha! Yeah. You know, Max Adam Cup, Steve. I can't just do that. It's <laughs> fucking over there with all of my cool shield stuff. That's how much I love it. Hmm. So I'm not gonna go get it. So you guys tap dance. I'm pretty sure I know what. Okay. No, you, yeah. you were gonna go see it on. So Ghostbusters, you were gonna go see it on Saturday. Hey, okay, there you go. <laughs> get out of here. Are you going to see it? Hey, Walker Young. <laughs> the, the movie theater that was near my house closed down, so I haven't found my new theater yet. Oh, I hate when that happens. Where am I gonna go? I need to yeah. be comfortable. I'm actually on the dark court. Oh, okay. No, you're good. Oh, language. <laughs> Perfect sign. I'm kind of in the middle of something where I'm walking around and getting this rocket. Uh, <laughs> Wait, so did you see Dune two yet? Shit, no. Sorry. Oh, just, can we just cut? How do I kick you out of this? How do I kick you off the? Street? I should just leave work early today and just go see both of them. 
Dude, you should go see one yeah, of them. Yeah, jump in if you want. Now, Larry's hat, you're definitely changed, right? Your hat, or am I just growing crazy? <laughs> so this is, uh, this is uh, definitely, I don't care about baseball anymore, even though this is the Worcester Red Sox. But I, mm. and because I went to school in Worcester, so everybody assumes that once I tell them. Got it. It's funny. People just go, oh, Red Sox fan, like secret handshake because they're the Worcester Red Sox, you know, minor team. But I got to go word you're His spelling. name is Walker. <laughs> <laughs> and so as I got up to get this rocket that Matt Shivers made. So see, Ooh. that's real. That's pretty solid out of that's 3D yeah. printed. That's pretty yeah. nice. Yeah, anal yeah. safe. It'll just look like oh, definitely oh, look like because it has the wings on the back. Yeah, look at that. But it's all one piece, which is very impressive. <laughs> yeah, Mark should have some. Anyway, uh, but yeah, we we really appreciate that because I think it was on the tenth anniversary of AIT. Uh, he made like a little maybe I don't know. That seems like a long time. Maybe we've just known each other that long. He made like a, what is that? Yeah. that you getting the yard work done, or is that Larry? No. Oh, can you hear it in the background? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. But, but Shivers had made like a little Lego thing of Colonel McAdam, and that was the rocket in the background. It was super cool. It really meant a lot to me. And then he sent me this thing, and then he's like, oh, yeah, like I'm just going to like go, oh, yeah, thanks for this thoughtful thing. Fucking throw it away. <laughs> oh, this, is, this is honest. Honestly, I feel like this is a trophy that Matt gave me for like being cool. Because that was like a really nice thing he did. So well, there you go. When are we going to get to the point that you can melt down an old 3D printed thing and just reuse the uh, right now? Oh, huh. yeah, you can you can you can reuse that. You people are actually making it so that you use you like um, you can make string out of like old like Coke bottles and stuff like that. Yeah. Ooh. Here's the thing. Like, uh, Mr. So Fusion. The 3D printer that we have, it's not that. It's like everything, everyone thinks PLA is like supposed to be plastic, but it's like DNA and the A means acid. So it's technically, even though it's solid, it's an acid <laughs> that's printed out. And so that's the stuff that we print you can't recycle, which is a drag because you'll get three quarters of the way through like, um, you know, a fucking Boba head helmet. And then it fucks up. You're like, well, this is just going in the landfill. There's literally nothing I can do about that. Doesn't I the A in the DNA timeline. stand for acid too? What's that? <laughs> Doesn't the A in DNA stand for acid? Yes. That's why oh. I chose that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I could have said LSD, but that's what I was going to say, that I wanted to live in the timeline where you just take that junk and you can like shred it up and sell it to the hippies because it like, you know, just mm -hmm. like have some good. Like, yeah, this shit's really bad for you, but the high is exquisite. So I I just feel like I should be recycling this instead of throwing it in and you choose what you want to do. And I, I made some Bitcoin. So <laughs> that's the future. <laughs> just throw it all into a big Oh, Philbo has pot socket socks. Of course he does. Yeah. We uh we have a funny story. I, I I think it's him. One of my buddies like worked near Worcester, Ma I, the the place that printed Worcester magazine that I worked at. So it's not it's not unlikely that we might have passed in the hall at, at some point because he worked for a company that used that printer at the same time that I worked there at the printer. If you know what I mean, I think it's Phil. You think I'd remember something like that? <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> I can tell you all the captains of the Enterprise in order, though. <laughs> oh, so, I, so, well, sp speaking of that, why am I reading such horrible things about the new Star Trek thing? Is it even showed up yet? No, no. The reason is yesterday. This was funny. First of all, you guys know I'm working on this project, right? And I was planning on doing it all day yesterday. But but <laughs> dropping Walker between the time I was dropped Walker off at school, stopped at the grocery store and put the groceries away and came, sat down. It was nine in the morning. My, I was there was a ton of people on the East Coast going, Larry, what do you think of this Star Trek? Thing? And it was that Variety did their cover story on Star Trek, 
Got it. And all the critics, they wrote the the headline for the critics to already because it was the title of the art piece was Does Star Trek Matter? And so <laughs> you can imagine. Even somebody who only mildly knows me is like, oh, Larry's going to go <laughs> off on that alone. And so, yeah, so I, I worked that instead of my cool project, but I did work on my project today. So. You did that today, right? Good. Very excited. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I'm so, yeah. I'm trying to finish the project for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all like very coy about our projects. Yeah. Right? No, I'm trying yeah. to write that final article. So I, I'm. Um... Let's let's make an announcement, actually, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, everybody knows we're collecting your your your. Um... Wait, have you not seen this? Is that yes. what it's called? Wait, I, I have to look. We even call it because... I don't know. Is it? I don't even know what it's called. That we should I have look. like this weird Jewish deli owner in my head that's like, how can you not have seen? Let it ride. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, so, so yeah. The, uh, the last article I wrote, I I want like I wanted to see. Have you ever seen? How I got into college, Mark? Yes. Okay. I wrote. Wait, that real quick. I... I tried to do a Jurassic Park quote. Okay. <laughs> to shoot her, and YouTube was like, "We can't post that." Okay. <laughs> oh man. Um, no. So I I wrote the entire article about that movie, and then I'm done, and I'm about to send it to Larry, and I'm like, I'm 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 digging through like this one folder I have of all like movie pictures and stuff like that that I have on my desktop. And every picture is like Curtis Armstrong, who's in it, who's Booger from the Revenge of the Nerds, Phil Hartman and Nora Dunn. As, and I'm like, oh, my God, I wrote the entire article about this movie, and I never mentioned these three people. Like, Phil, I didn't mention <laughs> Phil Hartman or, uh, you know, Curtis Armstrong, you know, Booger from Revenge of the Nerds, which would be like probably the first two people that I would definitely mention. And my brain completely removed them out of the movie. So then I had to go back and add it into the thing. But I edited it just at the blurb at the bottom. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, I was, can I, I tell you two, two notes? An intellectual one and an emotional one. So the intellectual one is that is a fucking killer way to end that article. Right? <laughs> it's like, and, and by the way, I didn't even fucking mention this. That's how fucking <laughs> amazing this is. That this is like the ante to this fucking game is these guys. That are stars of their own universes in the first place. Anyway, sure. so that's an intellectual thing. That really works narratively. But as an emotional thing, your bit about Curtis Armstrong sparked a 10-minute conversation between me and Mimi that at the end of it brought Walker in that we had to explain because he seemed better off dead, but we had to explain Miss DePesto's boyfriend in Moonlighting to him. Oh, that's right. And, <laughs> But That's so right. you gave like our family joy, <laughs> you know, like nobody was worried about the SATs or, you know, fucking Janice and <laughs> accounting for a second. And, and it, it was Curtis. Ar it was our buddy. Steve mentioned Curtis Armstrong. Yeah, yeah that was awesome. Who, you know, anyway, but yeah, so man, I'm feeling very Santa Christmassy today, aren't I? Yeah, yeah. I got something kind to say about everybody. Well, I'm, my last article I'm doing, I started it is uh the last one i think is the most appropriate because it's one that i know my dad still has a vhs copy of and i'm doing one for under the rainbow if you've ever seen that. oh yeah carrie so, fisher's in that carrie fisher chevy chase Bill, billy barty there's some I'm, I'm not you know i'm again i i don't go into too much detail yeah don't I'm, start don't give away yeah. the article man that's good the you know what's cool though like that's what a, i have this memory of like that's an hbo movie to me oh 100 percent Take off TV. Yeah, like I, I, I'm pretty versed on that movie because I accidentally saw it seven times. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just always that. Oh, that's I guess that's what we're doing today. Yeah, I, I kind of miss that level of media where you're yeah. not just it. I, I talking to my buddies about it, including you. I, it's I, I look at it as like that when 24 hour news started. Then, like huh. the kind, the world kind of went. Oh, really? We should be paying attention twenty four hours to everything. Hundred percent. It's a, and, it happened. And, it's it's happened to everything. I, I think not only news, but it's sports and yeah, movies. Everything. Because like, if you used to think about it, without all streaming and all this stuff, you would like. That's how I watched like Roadhouse. Like talking about Roadhouse, or like full, full eclipse. With or, or, yeah, exactly. Like something would yeah. just show up on TV. 
and you would just be like, oh, one, right. what is this? Or two, okay, I of course I'm going to watch this because it's on. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, like, so, but now it's like, I, now that it's, it's crazy. I, at night, I have like, it's, I spend like 35 minutes trying to find a damn movie to watch because the options are just yeah. endless. Well, and because that's, but that is like mirroring the experience of walking to a video store and just picking up five, you know, 500 VHSs and being like, am I going to watch this? Let me look at the back. All right. And that kind of, I enjoy that aspect of it all. So yes. if I spend the night just trying to pick a movie to watch, I feel like, ah, I still had a fun time thinking about 20 movies. Yeah, I, I think the only the only real difference was at that point, you walked out with a movie, there wasn't another option. So you yeah. you watched the whole entire thing. Like, you, you know, like pretty rarely would you ever go to Blockbuster, walk around, then just go oh. home and go to sleep. <laughs> right. Hey, you know, as an old man, I, I'm going to, because Walker's upstairs doing his, his uh homework so he should really be saying this but i'm pretty sure he's gonna okay me saying he agrees because i'll be trying to figure out what do you want to watch so you'll think of something and then you're the next step is well who fucking owns that what what streamer do i have to go to and then you have yeah. to kind of like look at your phone and figure that out and then maybe there's another thing say i have to go to hbo max or whatever and then you want the thing that's there, but then there's two other things and like, wow, that thing looks a little better. And you've kind of sifted down by the time I do all that Walker's like, can I just play, you know, PlayStation? Yeah. <laughs> right. And so there's yeah. not even a, there's not even a, the choice of stuff to watch. It's choice of stuff to do. That's all, that's all from the couch. True. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I think no, that's cool. Like, I, and I think that's why yeah. we're all headed to Wally really fast. But what can you Just do? Tell me what to watch. Have yeah. some protein shakes and a walk on the beach. What but so, so, but yeah, I think. Well, I mean, and that was, and it's funny now because now with all the streaming services, it's like obviously with the, <laughs> obviously with the, uh, uh, like the new road that's, house. That's the comment that's, that I was going to respond. <laughs> I got us flagged on YouTube for me saying shoot her. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> Easy blue. Shoot Easy. Her. Yeah, but no, funny. I mean, that was just like, that's what the roadhouse now was. So like, it's funny because the new roadhouse is like, <laughs> oh, okay. I knew the new roadhouse came out. So I had to see that. And okay. I wanted to see it pretty quick before I got to see too many spoilers <laughs> or people shitting all over it or people talking about it. It's the same thing with like, and then the flip side of that, that's my same method. You know, the method I go with like something in the theaters, like the new Ghostbusters or the new Dune. It's like, I got to see it first before I start getting any of the trickle of feedback um yeah, yeah. and and, and this, it was the same thing with, with roadhouse but then now my exposure to the original roadhouse was completely the opposite it was like yeah. the hell is this patrick swayze movie what's going on what is this this is yeah. crazy um and, and you know i caught it on tv <laughs> probably like tbs or tnt or something you know? how, yeah. do you remember how old you were i mean how old is roadhouse oh i don't it's 84 right something like that Let's see. I mean, I had to be at least 13 or 14 because it's it, locked in it's, at that it's, time frame. It's 89. 89, okay. Which means I probably, <laughs> at that time, there's a there's definitely a um, 89. Is Magic Star Video still open in my town? I probably, <laughs> like, my, like, like, it's probably, like, my yeah. parents probably rented it on VHS. Or and then I caught like, it on When HDL. did you have cable? Because I probably didn't have cable until probably 90. Yeah, so 90, 91, 92 is probably yeah. the first time I think. So I... did you watch it when it first hit VHS? Or do you did you watch it when it first was on TV and you had a TV to watch it on? I think I caught it in the background. And I probably didn't watch it from start to finish until I worked at the video store in New Jersey. <laughs> like, well, I was in yeah. like, till I was in high school and I worked at the video store. Like yeah. what, when I worked at the video store, you could rent three movies a day. I would rent three movies and I would make sure like that night I watched three movies. So then the <laughs> next, so what, and then I would go bring them back and get three more movies and do that. So like, so probably definitely saw it early nineties, probably high, you know, when I was in high school. So probably I would say like 95, 96 is when I definitely watched it full straight through. Yeah. So that's, I was just trying to get like, cause I keep forgetting everybody's 20 years younger than I am that, that if you have the context of, 
it at the time, which you did, right? I mean, that's roughly mm -hmm. it. It wasn't that weird in in the mid '90s to watch a movie from five or six years ago. No, 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 not at all. And think and not get the context under which it was made. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, and so that's like, how did so, I miss this? But if but you it's like you missed everything. <laughs> but if my kid like watched the old Roadhouse now, he'd be like, "This is some kind of bananas dreamland, right?" Right. Like, and but that's what made my perception of the new one so good is that yeah. like I missed everything on their marketing. I just went there making a roadhouse with Jake Gyllenhaal. Who cares? I don't care. And then but then like the day before, this is all over Netflix, my Netflix thing. And I'm like, fuck, I better what? This is out. I thought it was theatrical. Doug Lyman directed this. And, <laughs> and then I spent the next 12 hours like is it, is that you getting more of that roadhouse? <laughs> right. And I loved it. That was excellent. I had fun with it. I I, I, go I I had like this moment where I'm like, well, it's kind of weird that he has a back history of having accidentally or deliberately killed somebody in a moment of rage that kind of designed who he was. I was like, ah, oh, that's kind of a big leap from the original. And then I was like, wait, Patrick Swayze ripped some guy's throat out twice. So I was like, well, okay, so yeah, was, well, yeah, we need to have your lead be like a killer. Well, I, I mean, I, I mean, it was, it, it was, but it was more. I, he fought in UFC, so like they signed, uh, like he didn't kill someone in the. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but at the same yeah. time, I'm also like, <laughs> I think it added to. Can I? Well, it was I, the motivation I, for yes. his character, but whatever. Go exactly. Yeah. I, ha I I'm sitting on my writer thumb so hard, and I'm like. Mark, man, you know this. You're so close to it that you're missing that. That it's not just his backstory, but that's his his motivation at the end for not giving up on the on the whole situation. Like, why don't you just go out of town? What do you care? Oh it's yeah, because there's a thing in his head where the guy's down, but you know, fuck <laughs> you, and he can't stop that. And the yeah. whole movie is him being nice. Until that happens. Oh, wait. Well, yeah, until until nice. it's time to not be nice. I was just, but for me, a... it was more like, I can't believe they, they're going a darker route with this, where like the main oh, guy yeah, yeah. has had a history of having, yeah. yeah. Well, like, you no, know, Patrick well, Swayze well, killed on. somebody. Well, hold on. Hold on. If you, re if <laughs> yeah, you really twice. think about it. Well, but here's the difference Patrick Swayze was cool. Yes. Jake Gyllenhaal, regardless of what you think, is not cool. He's more of like, same way. He, 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 right. Like Patrick Swayze is, is like a stud. He's just like, he's just cool uh -huh. in the first roadhouse and it might be dated and all that stuff, but like he, the aura of cool just comes off of him. Whereas like Jake Gyllenhaal is like, you know, like kind of like a, I'm trying to think like a black sheep UFC fighter. Like he's a big, like, he's yeah. like a, like a kind of like an indirect loser and like, now he's just trying to make end meet, ends meet. And obviously the scene in the beginning with like the car and stolen, like yeah. he's like, they're, they're two different characters. It's the same premise yes. of the movie, but like Patrick Swayze is like, he walks into the room and he's the coolest person in the room. Jake Gyllenhaal walks into the room and, and you're like, Oh, that, you know, it's whatever. Like garbage. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I like that. Uh, Mark's point, though, that it's darker and grittier backstory that works for if you have Jake Gyllenhaal instead of Patrick Swayze, yeah, or like whoever the modern version of Patrick Swayze would be, right? I, you kind of don't want, you know. Uh, I was thinking about that. Like, would it be Zoomer like Ryan? Owen Wilson. Wilson. I, would it? No, would it probably Ryan be Gosling? like Ryan Gosling? Except yeah. Ryan Gosling is Ken. In I Barbie. think you'd have the same problem, honestly. Yeah, but think about yeah. him. Like, if if I I. Ryan Gosling. But Gosling has played... done a lot of great movies, though. He's done like where, like where the pines, Beyond the Pines, and Drive. Sure, but Baby think about, Drive. but right think of him in uh, Drive, 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 yeah. a Drive, yeah. and Blade Runner. Like that kind of to me is like that's Patrick Swayze, kind of that level. You know, of maybe you throw in nice guys, and you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he could do that. Whereas I, I listen, I think Jake Gyllenhaal was Judge good. is acceptable. <laughs> you know, I, I like I said, I thought I thought Jake Gyllenhaal was good in it. I thought yeah. I thought and I thought Conor McGregor was pretty nuts in it. Yeah, I, I don't I, know, you know what they were going for with him, but I kind of dug it. My, uh, <laughs> my whole 
think of that. I have no idea who that guy is. I love everybody going, what the fuck with this guy who everyone knows who it is. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm not researching it. I don't care. He's obviously some kind of like wrestler. I just enjoy that. It annoys everyone because yeah. I get to watch that movie and go, fuck, that's hilariously awesome. And yeah. I don't have any preconceived notions over whatever everybody has against him because that was great. I love that guy. <laughs> yeah. I Listen, it was it. It, it worked. It well, it well, it worked because like I think you couldn't have when you establish that Jake Gyllenhaal is like a um a UFC fighter, like a legit UFC fighter, yeah. be- beating up guys in a bar is kind of below him. So yeah. you kind of have to give him a, a bad a villain that's a, a little race. more oh yeah, over the top. Do, do, do you know beer. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> So I loved it. I loved yeah. every single I, thing about it. Yeah. I kept thinking him having the UFC background makes more sense how people would recognize who he was. Where in the original Dalton was just the cooler that everyone knew for well, some yeah, reason. No, no but then part of me was like, but I miss those days when like a guy who was like a famous bouncer walks into a bar in the middle of nowhere. And I thought like, you were taller. I thought, I thought, I thought you'd be that, taller. That's, that's I mean, a famous dude, bouncer from New York or whatever. But, like, But dude, that's like that line in that movie is the beauty of an old movie which yes. is lost today yeah. in like cell yeah. phone culture it. yeah. it's like the fact that they say that 20 times in the movie is why a kid today can watch that movie and be like well they had no cell phones so of course they're going to yeah. kind of have that comment and that's why i think it actually is even better now than it was then when it came out yeah. because they give they're giving you that i don't know i like I really like that movie. I mean, I can, I can, <laughs> I can, I can pretty much do the entire like first like forty minutes of it word for word. So like that's be nice, <laughs> right? The most fun I had with that movie was on the internet afterwards with numb nuts, and I would just say provocative shit that you know. I know I'm talking to an Olive Garden cook, so like, why bring up <laughs> narrative and metaphor? But, so, but this is one thing I, I was kind of in the mood. I couldn't help myself. And I was like, like, I don't know what you guys are worried about. Like every single thing in the old roadhouse shows up in this one. Like it's just thematically exact, which I do believe. And so I was waiting for some numb nut to go, well, where's Sam Elliott? And I go, it's obviously the African-American girl. Yes. And and he's like, what? And, and I'm like, dude, instead of getting throats ripped out or killed or i forget how he goes they just destroy her dad's diner but thematically yeah. that's why that happened you can't kill a little girl right she's out like, of your mind she's, she's, and, she's, but he's she's like see it's not exact and i didn't say that i said thematically exact yeah. and then whatever was bothering me went away some guy in detroit thinks i'm a dick it all worked out <laughs> The, the universe is at rest. <laughs> yeah, balance I mean, has been restored. The, the, right. the nod, the nod in that little like complex, which I thought was the best part, where the bookstore, yeah, the double was, deuce, the double deuce restaurant, and I was just like, okay, I'm cool. And yeah, then he, exactly. he they, they called the the uh, the nurse Doc, which was cool because yeah. that's what Sam Elliott called uh, um, Kelly Lynch, Mo- and it was just Kelly like there, there were like little like little subtleties in it, and that was. All I needed, man. I didn't need a big yeah. callback. I didn't need anything like that. M- my only thing is, you know, my feelings about kids in movies. I I think you could have, you. My version, the boatmaster or the dock master or whatever you call him, that's yeah. the Sam Elliott character, and you just the guy was like calling him Miho and yeah, exactly, some you know, knowledge, right? Like you make instead of it being the 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 young girl, you kind of avoid that completely, and then it's just. The guy where the guy who's running the dock, and you and you kill him because whatever yeah. you just kill him. The guy but, whose dog got killed by the crocodile. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but you know, it, I I loved it that she was a kid because I too have that same problem. You know how long it took me to be convinced to watch Stranger Things. I just hate mm-hmm. kid protagonists, probably for the same reason. Like I'm a dad, I don't need to see that. It's not entertaining me, <laughs> right? So I deal with it at home, but. <laughs> but the cool thing for me was she you get the whole thing where the kid's not in danger, but it was awesome because everything she did was like little meta Yoda stuff. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so it started to work for me that she was little, right? Because I was like, oh, here she goes. So she's I pointing a finger at the trope, going, Hey, you know you're in a Western, right? Yeah. And I, I fully expected the like, you're a stranger come to town. Like, 
I heard it anyway, you know, because it was so obvious and everything she did. So I'm like, that's why I was like, okay, if you're going to do it, yeah, you're, I, I approve. And then to the point where two days later, I turned it on while I was doing laundry. So that's, that's the mark <laughs> of a good movie to me. Shit, I might put it on in a little bit while I'm doing some work. Actually, that's like not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what it is. It's it's it will definitely go into my hard drive of just yeah. repeat movies because Roadhouse is already yeah. in it. So I might as and, and I'll give I'll give Jill and Hall the you know the nod. It, it was it yeah. was it was solid. Jez gave it their ultimate seal of approval, which was basically well, it was dumb, but I loved watching it. I was like, all right. <laughs> Yeah, that's all, I mean, that's, all, that's all it is. Boy, that that <laughs> sounds like that sounds like I have about eighteen hard drives of that. So let her know. <laughs> let uh, let Jez know. Uh, it's a hard. It's a thin needle to dread, thread. Yeah, you know yeah. what I think is cool about that is that if you reverse that sentence, it means the opposite, right? Like if you said <laughs> I loved it, that it was dumb. Like <laughs> what you're leaving people with completely changes if you say, "Well, that was dumb, but I loved it." You know yeah. what I mean? And it's not yeah. even like kind of the tone I'm saying it. Like that, if that was in print, you would read that the same way. It's like ending with something dumb is negative, but ending with something with love is positive, right? It's a, it's like the know. two examples I'm thinking of both ways is, is like Roadhouse <laughs> and Rebel Moon. You know, like Rebel Moon, eh, it was dumb, but I loved it. Roadhouse, yeah. I loved it, and it was dumb. Oh, no, vice versa, maybe. <laughs> no, I, I totally agree with that. I, I That's perfect. Wow. Well done. Write an article on that, Mark. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's dumb, but I loved it. I <laughs> there you go. I loved it, but it was dumb. Well, Dude. that's what I was trying to announce earlier, that we were going to do a collection of your articles, but I heard you uh, made an invitation that was accepted to somebody who's doing the introduction. Yes. Steve's like collection it? of articles, and I will be doing the introduction. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Only I, person, only person that made sense because he sat in my basement after we'd get Wendy's at two o'clock in the morning to watch something. So, and I, I remember you had this old book of movie reviews that you had in your closet in your basement, and it was like little two sentence reviews of movies. And I remember the one for Roadhouse was if a twelve year old wrote a movie. <laughs> yeah. So well, just like. Hot See, girls, boobs. Your mom has that, <laughs> book, right? I I might have it. I think I have it in the. I, I, think, I know yeah. it's, I, it's. It was. It's actually it was, Pot Smoker's Guide to Film. Yeah. So why don't you uh, try to find that, and you, we could double the size and entertainment value of your book. It, it's <laughs> it's actually here. I'll I'll show you what is what put it that is. in. Like that. This is, you know, the little acorn in form. Watch this. You know. Print on demand tree killing thing was, came from. <laughs> it was this book. It, was it that? It's that. Yep. It's absolutely a wonderful book. And I honestly, I, I, it's probably influenced. That book has influenced my brain, probably how I wrote the articles, and probably how I see movies. So, anyway, well, your book, uh, as it stands now, I realize I, I. You sent me that thing, and it was basically a cry for help um, slash book map, and I'm going to do that in a minute. <laughs> but I did just typeset the last article. Oh, and nice. without you know where things are right now, that's 48 pages long. There you go. That's pretty cool, man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, yeah, I got under the rainbow. I got my yeah. Well, we'll we'll yeah. we'll definitely get to 56, and if we had 64, I wouldn't be surprised. All right. Well, I got to keep on writing. That's, so that's, that's where the we're at right now. <laughs> and it's um, super fun. Walker's doing his book. You got Mark doing his intro. He's bringing his maglev, probably. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Book two. I was telling do you. Think, do, do you think you'll have it? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wait. What month is it? Yeah. July. <laughs> Will that you doesn't... have something? Will you have an ash can? Will you have like yeah. some? Okay. I'll have something. I love how chill he is. He's like, yeah, you know, oh, people are coming for my autograph and stuff. Uh, I guess we're going to season <laughs> 52, right? Man, whatever. <laughs> I'm like, now Walker Young, this is the kid you got to be talking to. Well, exactly, exactly. Um, uh, sp speaking of which, 
do you think we get what's the, I think we probably chatted about this a couple of weeks ago, but any, like, did you, well, first off, let's go. Did you see the Florence Pugh footage? I couldn't download I it and save it to the thread. I did. It's a, uh, yeah. Cause it's an Instagram thing. So yeah, I did see it though. It's excellent. I was very cross that she, uh, she didn't, uh, you know, get right in on the, the new world order thing. So we got a bootleg patches. I'd probably be done with a. You probably like, have one already right now. <laughs> but it looked cool. I mean, her costume is awesome. I love the director going. I'm not sure you're supposed to be doing this. Right. Yeah. right exactly. <laughs> the whole thing was great. They know Marvel knows how to work it. So what's the what's the? I was. I, I didn't read any because there's people that have kind of looked at the footage of what she's showing through. Oh, maybe I'll show you this. Oh, I can't show you that. But she shows you that. Is that the is that the prison? It's all, uh, as far as I could tell, it's the other side of a set. Well, but she looked. Yeah. You, uh, <laughs> when you know, you, what can you make of that? It's two by fours and plywood. It's the uh, the raft, right? I think is what there is. That, is that, that's what I thought. Like that's how I yeah. read it. Um, right. or. I don't know. Okay, but yeah, I, pretty cool. I listen. I, hmm. I well, the other thing I do you realize it's almost been a year since Guardians three came out. Yeah. Is that the last one? No, I think Marvels was, but uh, yeah. or maybe well, actually, is it? Oh, sorry, <laughs> the leaf blower. Sorry, guys. I, my neighbor is doing the. I'm in my garage. That's why. Um, <laughs> I thought we were in the middle of like Saw three or something for a second. <laughs> And then Mari sounded like, like relax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I don't know. How do I? Oh, I got to figure out how to make it so that he can't hear the background noise. All right. um, that that right there is hilarious. Yeah, that's too good. That's um, why Matt Shivers has the triple quadlu. <laughs> oh, here you go. Speaking CGI of CGI Burt, CGI Burt Reynolds. Oh. Yeah, this is this is our pal Tim Connolly, Timothy Timothy Connolly, who does oh. Does Very the nice. music for Dork Trek, and we got to have him on the show. We got to figure out when he's the ukulele guy. He's a very interesting cat. Um, well, he he yeah. he brought up a great subject today that I don't know if. Um, <laughs> mo- hold on, let me mute. <laughs> so wait, <laughs> he's muted himself. He's Bert, dead. Why Bert Reynolds? I'm wondering. Yeah, you know why Bert Reynolds thing. Oh. Because you know I think of Burt Reynolds, I think of uh, striptease. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Everybody who like was bringing up, hey, what's it? They, Tim was like, man, I, he's got to tell me if he doesn't mind me calling him Tim and Timmy. I can't do. It's a, it's a <laughs> Lawrence Larry thing. Like Lawrence is fingertip fingernails on the chat warrant on my soul. <laughs> so unless somebody makes a complete point of saying, no, I'm Matthew, or I'm David. <laughs> I kind of don't listen because I, you know, I'm that guy. I'm a blue collar dickhead. I'm sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> he brought up he brought up uh, Burt Reynolds, and I had to tell him that I don't. I'm not a Burt Reynolds guy at all. I don't care, mm. and it, it's. I feel bad because, woohoo! I'm a blue collar guy. You like transams and whiskey, and, but you know, even as a 11 year old, I could tell there was a little something wrong with Uncle Dom Deloise. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it just wasn't my scene. I get well, why people like. Well, it. I know I have a leaf blower going by, so I can't do anything about it. But I love Don DeLuise, and I love Don DeLuise in the in. Well, anyway, he asked about like what <laughs> what Burt Reynolds movies should we watch, and then I listed off I think like seven or eight that I like, but I don't yeah. know. But Hooper? I, I, Is that, what's the one where he's a stunt guy? Yeah, Hooper. Hooper? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, you know, I don't remember exactly which ones I recommended. Uh, that's one, that's one of the rare ones where a movie I don't care about actually know the director because that's mm. that was Hal Needham, the, the stunt guy, and it was his, it was his first thing. Uh, huh. and he wanted to be a director. And Burt Reynolds was like, Fuck yeah, you make me look great. Yeah. I owe my career to you. Oh, yes, I did call out uh, Stroker Ace, I like that one. Uh, <laughs> there's a couple, well, you know what, there is the thing about Burt Reynolds is you had like. There's like two Burt Reynolds. There's like the serious action, action, maybe not even action, but I guess in that time it's action. Like there's like the, um, there's like a bunch that are like serious. 
And then he goes and does like Cannonball Run and Smokey and the Bandit. And you're just like, yeah, kind of like that guy. I kind of like that yeah. movie, but it's a different one. Cause then if you go and watch like Malone or some of the older ones, it's, he's more ser- It's a more serious movie. And then, and then you 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 mentioned striptease or like boogie nights. That like that's the end yeah. of his like that's that's way well, at the back. He end. was also good too that because like he will go back on his history and own up to all the shit that he did wrong. Like Borman wanted him to be in Zardos to take the Sean Connery role, and Burn Reynolds was like, "I'm not doing that stupid shit." And then later on in life, but Reynolds was like, "I should have just done it." You know, he was a buddy of mine. He was making a movie. He asked me to be in it, and I should have just done it. Why wouldn't I? You know. And that's because uh, Letter Kenny wasn't a show yet with its mantra. If your friend asks for help, you help him. Yeah. The thing is, I'm not sure yeah. I would <laughs> like Zardoz if Burt Reynolds was in it. That's yeah, just body for it. I'm so like Indiana Jones situation for me. He had the deliverance body still, so I don't know. <laughs> it's so funny. And you look at photos of Connery and they're like, oh, he was so out of shape. He He looks good in that movie. I, I've never heard anyone say Sean Connery's out of shape. Even well, even when he's old and looks like a potato, that's fucking Sean Connery. Uh, I mean, he's not like... There he is. <laughs> yeah, he's not Helmsworth cut, but like he, he's fit, he's lean. But regular people kind of weren't back then. No, right? he looks, yeah, he looks no. more he looks more like a, a well-fit man in 19... What is this? 1974? Yeah, like that's what's great. That's what a healthy. People, yeah, but you know, know, like every now and then, a photo of him circulates on like Facebook nowadays, and people are like, "Look at this," you know, whatever. And it's like that's not what men looked like back then. That's not how anyone looked back in the day. That is what like the epitome of hotness was back then. Well, so don't I mean, put your you, 2024 listen, eyes on it. Don't forget, Sean, Sean Connery. I think was like a mis- Mr. Universe, or was in. Mr. He was. He, he was a bodybuilder or something like that. Yeah. So he was abnormally fit for people at that time even when he was doing like bond so i just like the epitome of masculinity of the modern day that is us bearded guys with glasses and (laughs) baseball hats (laughs) (laughs) sorry usually when people say one of us has to have it sideways when people say oh yeah you need a different you did a different way yeah exactly now Mm -hmm. it's every every version of the (laughs) every iteration i like how i'm old school Bend yeah. that brim, <laughs> takes those stickers off, son. You're not, you look like you're gonna yeah. take it back to return it because you can't afford it. <laughs> anyway, what, was uh, that? what else? What else did we talk about? We talked about Roadhouse. Walker talked- said something back that was pretty cool. Video games oh. are just 60 hour interactive movies. I agree. And Matt Shiver says, I'm with you on that, Walker. And I would like just to throw in, I would have said that couldn't possibly be true. Except, I, I and I still don't play these fucking things, but I have a kid who who plays them, and I watch because there's a narrative. And I, you know, hey, he feels like playing poker with cowboys for like an hour. I actually will watch that. That's fun. He's like, he's playing <laughs> Red poker, Dead, right? Playing I know, Red I know Dead. exactly what game you're talking about. <laughs> so <Yeah>. Red, <laughs> I watched him play Red Dead Redemption Two from beginning to end, and I swear to God that I think about that guy, Arthur, all the time, just dying of tuberculosis because that's <laughs> fucking, what are you going to do, right? And like like either that that's a story in my family or like a film that I love or something, that's a, like a real story in my head. And I I think that I, I stopped saying that video games are bullshit after that because oh, that I was be, really that... impacted by that game. Dude, that game is that game is awesome. It was um, it was a fun thing to like be exposed to like the new like level of what you were talking about, and it's just not eight bit yeah. bloop bloop, you know that I was used to. Anyway, so pour one out for Arthur, some cheap rye whiskey. <laughs> uh, yes, I yes. believe that's accurate. Yeah, he went bold so, wait, very young. Next, I know, I know. That's <laughs> yeah. So, after this, Mark, are you going to the go see the Ghostbusters movie so we can talk more about the Ghostbusters movie or no? Well, I can't tonight because I'm playing D and D. Okay, is that true? Because that's awesome. Uh yes. That, <laughs> man, is this the also, uh, is this the Dave Group bowling league? A uh, pool, 
pool. Billiards. Billiards. Right. Jazz is still in it. I am not. I I because I do D D on Thursdays. So I gotcha. every other Thursday I would have to miss a game. So you know, talk to the guy and I was like, ah, but Jazz is Jazz is want to do something different, joined a pool league, a billiards league in Roner Park. I heard so they're like, pretty good oh. at it too. Yeah, well, you know, they had an excellent teacher. <laughs> <laughs> that goes without saying. You know what we have for a, a, a phrase in our house? The Rosenheim is assumed. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, we'll do something cool that everybody, I forget, I think Walker said it first, That which makes that funnier because he was talking about his own mother. But the, that, like, okay, good job, Daddy. That all came out perfect. But, like, Mommy <laughs> helped you quite a bit, and everybody knows. And I just, it was so, like, funny because it's true that i'm like dude i am saying that forever and i'm gonna apply it to other people in other situations mm. so you, you teaching de jazz billiards is well yeah right. the espinoza is assumed <laughs> small world family up in the park there's a there's really all... good comic store up there uh yeah uh op comics yes Yes. That was Walker's first comic book signing, actually. Our buddy Jason McNamara and Paige Braddock, who's uh, we used to be next to her at uh, San Diego in the early days. And, you know, she, she did Jane's World. And now mm -hmm. she's the curator of the Charles Schultz Museum in Santa Rosa. Nice. But they did a book when Walker was like 18 months old. <laughs> and uh, we went to their signing up there. It's a very, very big store. Very nice. It was fun. It was cool. So I, t I say that to McNamara every once in a while that, like, you know, my kid's first comic book signing wasn't even for his dad own dad's book. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I, Park, I was more comic book stores and billiard halls per capita than any other cap. <laughs> so I was looking up what what's the potential next movie to get tickets for. Hmm. Mm. For us? Dune 3, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Well, I there's the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Oh yeah, that looks great. Cavill, which, nice. Um, which I Cavill, don't... Superman and Reacher in the same film, sold. And then Furiosa is May twenty fourth. Wow. That's not that far out. Wow, yeah, it's uh, April. Huh. So Furiosa, I'll definitely get tickets for. That's a no brainer. And then I was looking, and I'm like. Nothing Marvel. Dead, yeah, they're only supposed Dead, to have two this year, right? Well, uh, Deadpool. Yeah. Well, Deadpool's going to come out when we're at Comic Con, or the week after Comic Con. It's the week what? after, isn't it? Yeah, which is because I remember <laughs> noting that because it was like, yeah, you don't don't do it before, You're right? Yeah, because, and don't do it during. You have to do it after, and yeah. everybody will feel like they were at Comic Con, right? Like then, and then Tennessee and stuff. It's like we. Because right. nobody at Comic Con spoiled it for everyone, you know. Yeah, and, and then right after Comic Con is the Borderlands, and then the Aliens one. So, the, so you know, Borderlands oh, is going to have presence there. You know, the Romulus one's going to be there, and then you know, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think, what's the DC one? Is there anything? Oh, it's the Joker. Whatever. Blah. <laughs> yeah, because then you get like Craven, Venom. Well, Venom, Venom movies aren't terrible. I uh, I just like that <laughs> I'm at the point again where I'm like, yeah, you know, I'll get around to that if I see it because San Diego is all about selling our books again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Which is cool, man. Like, putting all these books together is a blast. Yeah. I'm digging well, it. They didn't do it last year. They didn't do it last <laughs> year because they didn't have, they didn't have the, um, the... Writer strike. The writer strike. Right. But this year... I. Listen, I, I think the past two years of Comic Con have been completely unique. Yeah, and and I think this this year will be the if last studios, year was if, great. The lack of Hollywood being there was really fun because like people were just walking around Artist Alley. They were talking to all the independent comic book people. It was actually like a comic book show again, and it was great. And it was like what Walker's first show selling his book too. So we happened to be there in the year when people yeah, were like, really, "We want new art. We want really, to like, focus yeah, on writers." Cool. And, yeah. Plus, you know, we had a lot of help. Oh my God, lots of, lots of folks activated their fans and, and got oh, for sure. attention, which was really cool. 
Yeah. And, you know, yeah, the, the, the lack of Hall H of having like pull like 60% of the people off the floor and put them elsewhere didn't happen last year. So I just, everyone was just there circling around over and over talking and it was, it was great. It's going to be kind of a bummer to go back this year and kind of see that all happen again. But, but I think it won't. I, from a marketing standpoint, though, like having more of that presence of like celebrity on the floor for like promoting yeah. of product, because that that's what, I mean, it does create a lot, a ton of congestion on the floor, but it also, yeah. it also does bring a lot of people to the floor. Mm. So, um, you know, and having been by the DC booth for a billion years, to <laughs> then have DC not even have a booth and to, and to only yeah. be represented in the, what was it? The Warner, what the, oh, with yeah. just the, 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 uh, the TV properties, like to not have anything that's representative, like, DC Direct or DC, you know, like right, all right. the DC stuff. That was crazy. But I think like, what was it, Image right by us then? I think it was Image. Yeah. Kind which of was great. Yeah. I, I seem to remember all the movie costumes, though, for the DC stuff like Aquaman and Flash, right? Oh, so yeah. they had a presence. And I, who was that? That must have been Warner itself, right? Yeah, yeah. That was, oh. but that was down, that was down the. But maybe that's what they thought. We've got this nonsense covered. They don't care about the comic. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, like, I don't know. You kind I of, know. yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't. But you, I don't know. Like, I, I still watch how like Marvel does it, and I feel like Marvel does their booth right. Like, I, I feel like you still, you, you know, it is a comic convention, so you definitely have like the comic book people there talking. But dude, you have to like put like one artifact from an upcoming movie out there to just get people to lose their mind. And like the one yeah. year they put the Infinity Gauntlet, it was just like that yeah. was before it was ever in the movie. That was before it was, yeah. and it was just like you do something like, like that's what I think they should do now. Like just put something in a in a box and just you know I don't know. Can I, can I tell you a crazy anecdote about that? Because like, sure. you, you know we have the the credentials to go in early. So the first time I saw that Infinity Gauntlet, there was no one around. <laughs> and I just stood there for a second and I was like, this fucking looks fake. And then I started going through this whole thought process. Like, what does that mean, man? There's obviously something that has corporeal reality sitting in front of you. I mean, it's early in the day, but you're not hallucinating. Why do you, and I, and I couldn't shake it. It looked fake. And I'm like, it's not a dumb thing because, you know, the illustration turns into something in my memory and it, it's not that. And I, and I realized that it was my brain couldn't process that that, that was a fucking movie prop in a movie <laughs> that was fucking actually coming out in a couple months. That it was just there for marketing purposes in in the in my world that I lived in right that second. And it was <laughs> such a weird like I was like oh man you know I bet the sheep herders had some kind of like a pitiful apocryphal moment or some weird little realization like that that like. Hey, you know the world is crazy, isn't it? And but it turned into like religion, and I'm like, <laughs> that's kind of happened to me. Except my religion has Captain America's shield and Captain Kirk's badge. You know, that's all. Yeah. Anyway, Captain America died for our sins. Like, that's what I think of when I think of the Infinity Gauntlet. Now it's like, yeah, yeah fucking right on, pop culture. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just. I'm interested to see what they do this year. It'll always, you know, it's like, like I said last year with the writer strike. I think everyone was just like, "Oh, writer strike. We don't have to do this." Oh, writer strike, writer strike, and it was. Yeah. This is different. This is a different year. Yeah. So, maybe we'll do a live show from there. Shivers will love this. He's definitely going to do it again someday, because that's that's your pilgrimage, man. That's that's pop culture mm -hmm. mecca. And so, yeah. listen to us going. Yeah, I hope they have something cool like this pivotal event like i was when walker i was getting walker wound up i was like dude remember that guy pierce time travel movie we saw the <laughs> fucking time machine was there it's just a thing that you like had to walk around to get to see the batmobile you know <laughs> and he's like what this is a real place and i'm like yes dude when they remember when they had uh starks like all the iron man suits on the stage uh yeah. yeah the whole the yeah the I, they've had some they've there's some been some spectacular things there so i it, it is it's cool to see and and you know i think the one year they had like uh prop store of london had some 
crazy props from like Blade Runner, which is always like, mm. yeah, I'll never be able to afford that or yeah. see it or touch it. So that's pretty cool behind glass. <laughs> the great one I think of when people go, oh, well, when I was a boy, I'm glad there wasn't the internet because I did embarrassing shit. It's mm -hmm. like, no, I, when I was a boy, I wish I had a fucking phone that took pictures the year that Ian and I were there, like, five in the morning, and we climbed in the owl ship from Washington. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's <laughs> farting in the chair, and we're laughing, like, Ian, you ever just farted in the watchman ship? And then uh, we <laughs> see the, because we're up high now that we see where the security guards are, and we hop out run around there's no proof that that happened i could just be lying right now <laughs> but uh, my, my butt remembered <laughs> i mean if, if there was ever a better segue to the rap that's like there's nothing yeah. better than <laughs> oh yeah on that note right yeah you think mm -hmm. you didn't ah, good old awesome all right well next thursday definitely right um yeah i cannot do next thursday i mm -hmm. am i am in orlando uh, mm. I am going to Disney World for oh, my, to celebrate so with the fam to celebrate my parents' 50th wedding anniversary. Oh so, man! Oh, congrats to them. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. So, congrats to them. And I uh, guess I'll allow it. Yes, but I will watch if you guys do it. I will definitely you know comment. Yeah, you know what? That'll be perfect. That'll be the. Um, we'll see if Timothy Conley is uh, available. Oh, I think you should do that. chat with him about his music stuff. I love it because yeah. you know for 10 seconds and then he'll tell us about ghostbusters and mark will go ah, i haven't seen it yet well i have a goal i have a goal for next week so <laughs> <laughs> to see ghostbusters or dune 2 you'll have to tune in and find out <laughs> <laughs> all right awesome <laughs> perfect all right everybody all thanks right. for tuning in and thanks for talking <laughs> later all all right <laughs>